Welcome to Ask a Gardener with the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance for Under the K Park. My name is Mihalis. Today we're going to talk about winter hardness. What zone is my zone? What temperatures can my plants withstand? What are the right plants to pick for such New York City environments? Our winters here are really, really cold. So we have to select the right plants so that they survive the winter. Today, we're also going to talk about some evergreens we can add to our gardens and texture that we can add to our gardens because the winters can be really, really sad and there is a lot we can do to make it more interesting uh, with textures and native plants. So I'm going to start with uh, hardness zone. And as we see here now on the slide, the United States is, is, is divided into categories of temperature and hardness zones. And New York is in hardness zone six and seven, which means the plants you wanna grow here should withstand temperatures of around minus 10 Fahrenheit, which is pretty damn cold. And as you see, with all the snow around me and actually ice today, we definitely need to pick plants that can withstand the cold really, really well. When we talk about hardness zones, it, it's not, it's, it sounds more complicated than it is really. Um, I wanted to, to give an example of how to estimate where your hardness zone is, whether you're in New York or you're in Florida or you're in Alaska. So Alaska, for example, is hardness zone one and Puerto Rico is hardness zone 13. New York is right around the middle. So going native with native plants, such as we do at Under the K Park, uh, ensures that the, survi the survival of your plants increases dramatically. In these videos that we will be doing weekly, I really want to inspire all of you to go native, to grow native plants, uh, which is also what we're gonna be doing at Under the K Park. Um, as a foreigner and an immigrant myself, I had to learn everything from scratch about how to grow native plants here in the United States and especially in New York. If I could do it, anyone could do it. I grew up in a totally different environment in the Mediterranean. And let me tell you, it's not as complicated as it sounds. So come with me now. We're gonna talk about evergreens. I'm going to start with one of my all-time favorites, which is the American Holly. Uh, as you see in the slides, we have a green American Holly and a variegated American Holly, which are really one, two of my favorite varieties of, uh, of, of evergreens that produce berries that can sustain birds. The berries sustain birds uh, throughout the year because last year's berries stay on the plant for many, many months after they are produced. Um, so even in the winter, the birds have something to feed on and that's really important, you know? Um, another plant that I will be experimenting with at the, under the K Park is the red anise. It is one of those evergreens that can survive in no sunshine. It is a full shade plant that I'm going to be experimenting with um, under, in, under the K Park and I'm super excited about it. And even though it is listed as a zone seven and higher hardness plant, it has been surviving the winter really, really well. And I'm super excited to uh, have it as an addition into the garden. Now let's move on to, to more texture plants. And while we're looking at this, at this material here that I have gathered from uh, last year's growth, I wanted to mention one more plant that I really like 
for evergreen, for its evergreen qualities and its flower qualities, which is the great laurel. It is a great plant for uh, shaded areas and it has beautiful, beautiful evergreen leaves. Uh, for, for understories, it's a great plant. This is our dried materials from all the perennials we grew in the spring and summer. Here I have gathered all the, the switchgrass, the aster, goldenrods, um, and so much, so many more textures we have here. Echinacea, uh, Veronicastrum, and Black-Eyed Susan. So I do not throw anything out. I do not waste anything. I cut them and I place them in a corner somewhere in the garden, especially somewhere I know the seeds are gonna fly and go into the neighbor's yards or into nearby fields and multiply, you know? You don't have to cut everything down and throw them in the garbage. You could compost or you could save the seeds in a corner and allow wildlife to feed on them throughout the winter. There is no need to make everything clean and perfect. Actually, nature prefers undisturbed, kind of like uh, not so manicured environments. So these dried materials can also be a great reservoir for adding to flower arrangements. They, they, there are so many different complex textures here that you shouldn't just waste them. And as you see, I shake a little bit and more seeds fly off. As we see here, we have collected a bunch of seed heads that not only are they gorgeous for arrangements, but they are also sustaining wildlife in the winter. One of my main favorite native plants is the echinacea. My God, it's so stunning, even in the winter. So in the, in the spring and summer, late spring and summer, echinacea give us amazing flowers. Uh, when the flowers are spent in the fall and in the winter, the seed heads stick around, providing uh, all these seeds to birds. And not only that, it, it, they have such a huge contrast to the environment around, especially when, it, when it's snowing, that they just make things look pretty. Um, another one is the penstemon. We have a slide of the penstemon. In the spring and the summer, again, it has gorgeous flowers, but in the winter, these seed pods over here are just wonderful. I really love them. We will be adding more of these to the Under the K Park because they're just so wonderful. Another plant that I really, really love about its winter texture is the Veronicastrum virginicum, which again is super gorgeous in the summer. We have also Black-Eyed Susan. Look at that, so cute. More plants that you could add for, for texture and, and conservation is the Virginia Creeper. We do have a slide of the Virginia Creeper. So this vine that can cling onto trees, onto walls, um, which surrounds the entirety of the, under the K Park. The walls around the, uh, around the park uh, of the bridge are loaded with Virginia creeper. In the spring and summer, it has a luscious foliage with five leaves. In the spring, in the fall, it turns reddish. And uh, throughout the summer, it starts producing black blueberries uh, that can hold through uh, the winter. And birds like to nibble on them. That is another plant that we could really we should really consider we also have the white beautyberry and the purple beautyberry we will be adding more of these at the, under the k park because birds love to feed on these berries and people uh, whenever they see these berries they go 
they go crazy they're like this is so pretty uh, in the winter the berries stay on the plant really tight uh, and the in, in a white and gray environment it adds this great tone of purpleness I really really love them I would be a little careful when I am buying beauty berries uh, because there is the the wild type and then there is the cultivars. Nurseries do have a Japanese beauty berry that they they sell. I encourage everybody if you can't, if you if if you can select the native uh, wild type of the beauty berry or at least an American cultivar. So all in all, uh, I don't. I want everybody to not be afraid to. To select plants for your winter gardens uh, you can use either is very simple tools you can use to get that confidence you need that your plants are not gonna die in the winter native plants if, if, if you know that a native plant is is native then you it's not it's really more likely to survive your winter here in New York the more exotic you go the less the odds are for survival and at under the K we're trying to bring as many native plants as possible into the world to not just show the beauty but also educate the world about why they're so important thank you all very much for uh, tuning in today uh, at ask the gardener me Mihaly uh, thank you Lynn and Diego for being with me and thank you all for your questions please keep asking us questions because it makes us want to do more of these videos for you again thank you and have a great day